In this video, we're going to look into this paper called How Much Do Language Model Memorize? This is a paper released on the 2nd of June. Today is the 8th of June. So it's a very, very new model done in collaboration with Meta, Google DeepMind, Kona University, and NVIDIA. Essentially, looking at the limitation and the characteristics of how models change and perform with a certain number of data and parameters. So this video is broken down into three different sections. We're going to talk about memorization, language model capacity, scaling loss membership inference, and what it means for when it comes to training a model, finding limitation of these models. Now, what are the three main central topics that the paper covers? First is how much can a language model memorize? Second is how does model size affect memorization versus generalization? And also do bigger models leak less private data? Now, what about the memorization framework? Unintended memorization versus true generalization? How much a model just those data versus actual learning to predict the next text? So the two main things that they talk about in the memorization framework. Now this is a figure where they showcase the memorization of text across different model sizes and number of data points. What's interesting is what they saw is the amount of data points they set in based upon a certain number of parameters of the model. So that's a 3.6 million parameter model. They actually saw the training data has left less effect on how the model is retaining the information from. And what it does is after a while, it starts to learn more general pattern, which means retaining the knowledge from the data is less important for the model over the course of the training data. Now this, they were able to test this by checking what is the summarization length of a given thought. If the generation length is less for a specific topic, which means the model has better knowledge about this without generating a lot of noise. This is quite similar to how humans think as well. When a person tries to explain a topic and uses a lot of different words, is a pretty good indication that that person doesn't really know what they're really talking about. So a pretty similar benchmark is being used on these models, which I find to be very, very interesting. Now, what have they found about this? Well, first, how much the model is trained affects by the, or the unintended memorization is affected by how much data is being trained on and the size of the model, and how much a model just stores data versus actually learn to predict the next word is also based upon the model length and data set size, as we just saw in this picture over here. Now, what about language model capacity? The model learning plateaus after a certain data point, as we just saw previously. And what was also very interesting is that they saw model memorization has a general pattern where only 3.6 bits per parameter is how much the model can hold. By the way, this is not affected by the floating bit of these parameters, like 16 bit or 32 bit or 8 bit. So 3.6 bits tends to be the general bit per parameter to how much they can hold the information. Now, while that is being filled up during the training procedure, what they saw was after a certain moment when these 3.6 bits has been fully exhausted, that's when it starts to learn the general pattern of the data rather than memorizing the specific information from the data. This is another graph depicting 3.6 bits per parameter of a GPT-based type of model or transform architecture-based model. Now, what about the scaling law of membership inference? Scaling law is how it's related to model's capacity and dataset size. This study derives scaling laws that relative model capacity and dataset size to the performance of membership attacks. Now, why was it done? The reason why it was done is to see how the model behave with dataset and model size. So they've trained two different models over here. One is a GPT-2 medium and GPT-2 Excel, which is a decoder from the transform-based architecture. And what this was interesting was, let's say we have a 1.5 billion parameter model. When they passed in 18 million data points, they got a pretty F1 score of 95, whereas the more data they fed in, the worse the F1 actually got. So the general consensus of this deep learning model needs a lot of data to train and get the most out of it, it tends to be not so true in these type of GPT-based models. Based upon the parameter, if you pass in a proportional amount of data, you will get the most out of it. Out of it. So not only don't you, you don't have to spend a lot of time, a lot of time and resource on curating a data set to train the model, but also just the right amount will give you the most bang for your buck. Now this is important, is because whether or not the model can learn more general information, if that's the goal of your model training, the more data you need. But then if you just want the model to know a specific context of your problem, then just the right amount will be enough. Now, this right amount will depend on what model you're using and also what type of domain you're working in because some domains are more complex than others. 
but it's a pretty good consensus to start out with a small amount of data. But again, the thing that they really focused on in this paper was what about privacy? How can we train the model so that it doesn't leak privacy or private information? And therefore, putting in more data makes much more sense in that case. Okay, coming back to what this paper really, really captures. So how much can a language model memorize? We just saw it can memorize around 3.6 bits per parameter. More than that, it starts to learn the general information from the data set. How much does the model size affect memorization versus generalization? Of course, as more data you put in, the more general it gets, but the caveat is the more parameters you have, the more it can learn from the data and less generalize. And does and do bigger models leak less private data? Yes, kind of, as we saw from the predicted F1 score. All right, guys, that's a quick video on this paper from these really smart researchers over here. I hope you found this video insightful. If you guys did, please feel subscribe. I make similar videos like these. All right, guys, hope to see you in my next video. Have a nice day.